I often see a lot of confusion from people about which grass they should be growing. It doesn't help when garden staff don't know how to answer those questions, and it really doesn't help when you can find the same bag of grass seed on the shelf in North Dakota and Tennessee. Should the grass work in both locations, one or the other, or neither? Some, I want to walk you through some general guidelines for choosing a grass species for your specific location. If you're looking for help with your yard, don't forget to like and subscribe. The best grass for your lawn is not necessarily the one you like the best, but the one that is best adapted to where you live. If a grass is adapted to a certain set of environmental conditions, it will take less work and fewer amounts of water and chemicals to keep the lawn nice. Although there are approximately 1,400 grasses in the United States, there are really only about 25 that are adapted as turf grasses, and of these, really only 12 to 14 grasses that receive extensive use. However, not all of the grasses that are adapted to the United States will thrive or even survive in different parts of the country. Depending on where you live around the country, there are certain species or mixtures of species that will do best for you. This video will give you grass options and a few strengths and weaknesses of each for all locations. Depending on where you live, you'll have the choice between cool season grasses or warm season grasses. As you may guess from the names, cool season grasses do best in cooler climates while warm season grasses grow well in warmer areas. For each zone, there may be a number of options including lesser known grasses that could work for a lawn, but for this video we're going to concentrate on the common turf grasses. Also, the zones I've created for this video aren't necessarily hard and fast rules that you can only grow the certain grasses that I mention, as often these boundary lines are muddy, so you can sometimes have successes with a grass that I didn't mention for a certain area. These are general guidelines only. Starting with the northern US and most of Canada, you're looking mostly at cold winters and warm summers. Other conditions like humidity and rainfall amounts will vary across this region. But the critical thing we need to consider when choosing the primary species for this area is how cold the winters are. Due to this, there are only four grasses that are used with any regularity across this zone. Kentucky bluegrass, fine fescues, perennial ryegrass, and the fourth is creeping bentgrass, but this species should not be used on lawns. Tall fescue is not used an awful lot in the far north as it lacks the cold tolerance of other cool season grasses. Kentucky bluegrass and the fine fescues have excellent cold tolerance and will persist even through the roughest northern winter. Kentucky bluegrass is the real workhorse for this area though, and most of the recovery into thin areas of the lawn will be because of it. Kentucky bluegrass can relatively quickly fill thin areas on lawns because it produces underground runners or rhizomes that spread into thin spots. Kentucky bluegrass also makes a really pretty lawn. Fine fescues have better shade and drought tolerance in Kentucky blue, so should be included on treed sites and areas with dry summers. Perennial ryegrass is a really pretty grass, stripes up nicely and germinates very quickly, but it doesn't have the cold tolerance that the others for this area have. Because of this, do not plant straight perennial ryegrass on a lawn across the north. If you are going to use it, make sure it is in a mix with Kentucky Blue or a fine fescue to make sure that there is grass still living after cold winters. Also, make sure whatever grass seed you are purchasing doesn't have a high percentage of perennial ryegrass as it will come up quickly, outcompete the other grasses that will germinate slower, and you'll end up with a lawn that is mostly perennial ryegrass, and you've got the same problem as if we were planting an entire lawn to it. There are some obvious benefits of a fast germinating grass. First, aesthetically, it looks better than bare soil. Second, as the grass germinates and starts to grow roots, it holds soil in place very well, so reduces erosion. Third, grasses that fill in quickly can crowd out weeds. So if you need quick cover, having some perennial ryegrass in a seed mix can help with this, but as I just mentioned, limit the amount of perennial ryegrass in the mix to 20 or 30% max to avoid ending up with a mostly ryegrass lawn. Also, if you see annual ryegrass on a bag, steer clear of it. Annual ryegrass is an annual, so it'll only live until the summer heat kicks in and is a large and light green plant that germinates and grows quickly, and you can end up with a really poor lawn after the annual ryegrass dies out. Annual rye should really only be used for short-term soil stabilization. So no perfect grass for the extreme northern U.S. and Canada, uh, but certainly Kentucky bluegrass and fine fescues are going to do much, much better than the other cool season grasses uh, for that location.